Hi, and welcome to today's lecture, which is coming to you from Dr. Fransel's study in Rinmar. Um, so today what I want to talk about is about salts. And even though we've been talking about acids and bases, it turns out that salts can be acidic or basic too. So how does that work? So let's think about an example, because it's probably easiest to think about it in this way. So let's take sodium acetate. And sodium acetate's formula is NaCH3COO. And we know that this, the acetate ion, CH3COO minus, is the conjugate base of acetic acid, of CH3COOH. And when we say base, we mean base. Bases act as a base. So how does that go? CH3COO minus, if that reacts with water as a base, the acetate steals a proton from the water, giving us back acetic acid, CH3COOH, plus OH minus hydroxide. So here we have a conjugate base with water giving us the acid plus hydroxide. And it makes sense, if I'm producing hydroxide, this must make the solution basic. Um, how basic is it? Well, let's do an example and see how that goes. Um, so we expect to find the pH of any sodium acetate solution. To be less than seven at 298 Kelvin. Okay, so let's do an example. I'm just gonna pick a value. And let's look at a solution of 0 0.50, 0.50 molar sodium acetate. What's the pH? I know that pKa of acetic acid is 4.75. So this is going to be a rice or an ice table. Um, and so for that, I'm going to need the Kb, because this is acting as a base, not the Ka of acetate. OAC minus. So to get that, I can use the pKa because I know that handy relationship that pKa plus pKb is equal to 14, again, at 298 Kelvin. If you want the more general form, remember that's pKa plus pKb is equal to pKw. And that's the general form. Okay. And so if I use that, I can find that pKb, then, of acetate is equal to 14 minus pKa of its corresponding acid, which is acetic acid. So it's 14 minus 4.75. So pKb for us is equal to 9.25. So the Kb, then, is 10 to the minus pKb. 10 to the minus 9.25, or comes out to be 5.62 times 10 to the minus 10th. That's very weak, right? That Ka, or Kb rather, is very small. So that indicates a very weak acid, or base. In this case, base. Um, all right, so set up our rice table. Um, and if we do that, we have acetate, in equilibrium with acetic acid plus hydroxide. And you might be wondering as we do this, um, where is sodium? In all of this, and where is sodium in all of this? Sodium in all of this is a spectator ion lying on the beach somewhere, 
nice umbrella. Don't we all wish that? Nice hat on, the waves. It's almost time for break, right? So here is our delightful sodium. So what do we call those things? Of course, spectator ions. And here's our sodium. Okay, so back to the rice table for this. Maybe I'll move this down so we can see it more clearly. R-I-C-E. Here's the reaction. Our initial concentration of this, I said, was 0 0.50 molar. Um, these, I don't know what they are yet. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of acetic acid and a little bit of hydroxide and lose some acetate. So the equilibrium values, by now this is becoming pretty much second nature. I can use Kb, 5.62 times 10 to the minus 10th, which is equal to the concentration of acetic acid times the concentration of hydroxide divided by the concentration of acetate. I can pull those from my table. That's x times x divided by 0 0.5 minus x. If I solve the quadratic for x, I find out that x is equal to 1.68 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. That, is, of course, is the concentration of hydroxide. The pOH minus log to the base 10 of that is equal to 4.78. And from that, I can calculate the pH. 14 minus pOH is equal to 9.22. And as expected, that's basic. So we can now sort salts by looking at them and seeing if they're comprised of a spectator ion and a conjugate acid or conjugate base of a weak acid or base. So maybe one way to capture this is to say non-neutral salts are a spectator ion. sitting on the beach, um, and some kind of conjugate acid base of a weak base or acid. So let's look at some examples, see if we can sort this out. Um, here's a list. And let's ask the question, which one of these will produce solutions that are basic, neutral, or acidic? So which will produce aqueous solutions that are acidic, neither neutral or basic? And here's a list. Sodium chloride, potassium fluoride, magnesium acetate, ammonium chloride, potassium benzoate, which you find as a um, preservative in many things, potassium bromide. So let's try to put these in boxes. And maybe we'll create three boxes for these. So here is let's make three of them. Start with one and right, so now I have three three neat little boxes I can put things in and this one's going to be the acidic solutions. 
the neutral solutions and the basic solutions and what goes what goes where so what becomes an acidic solution in each case what i need to do is divide these up and see what is their spectator ion and what is their if it has one conjugate acid or base so you have to recognize your ions we're back to first semester so recognize your key ions so if I look at this first one this is sodium plus and Cl minus sort of the iconic salt um, if I look at this this is the conjugate base of a strong acid which means it's not an acid or a base Maybe I want to put this down below because I think it might be easier to kind of collect these things down here. So let's consider NaCl. That's going to put it under the um, put it under the neutral. I'm trying to figure out a way to make this, you know, readable as you go. So I'm going to put sodium chloride here because it's Na plus and Cl minus. Cl minus is the conjugate base of a strong acid and they have they don't want protons has a no desire to hold on to protons okay so if I'm a chlorine chloride ion here Cl minus and if you're asking me if I want um, a proton? The answer is no. No desire for a proton. I gave it all away. No, I just got rid of mine. Okay, so when you see these strong the conjugate base or the conjugate acid of a strong acid or base, those things have no desire for protons, no desire to get rid of protons. They just want to stay exactly as they are. Um, so their salts will be neutral. Okay. So let's go back and look at our list a little bit. What else do we have up here where we have strong acids and strong bases? Um, potassium bromide is another one. So here's another one. KBr, that's K plus, Br minus, um, HBr is a strong acid. So Br minus um, is not basic. What else from the list? So we've gotten rid of this one and this one. How about potassium fluoride. Well, HF is a weak acid. So if HF is a weak acid, F minus, so if I have potassium fluoride, KF, that's K plus and F minus. F minus, this is the conjugate base of a weak acid, HF. Therefore, it's basic. Any salt, any fluoride salt is slightly basic. Back to the list. Let's look at um, magnesium acetate. Okay. So if I do another one down here, that's going to be magnesium acetate. And OAC minus, we already know this. This is the conjugate base of acetic acid. If it's a base, this will also therefore be basic. Yes, I am making you do this from home. My kids are my kids are surprised. Um, so this one here, this potassium benzoate. You say, well, what is the benzoate? Well, benzoate has that same pattern that we've been seeing. So if I add it down here, this is more in our basic piece. So this has that pattern of the C double bond O bond O minus. And this is 
the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid, of an organic acid. So this is going to be basic as anything else that has this pattern to it. All those things will be basic in solution. And, that's a, and let's take our last one, which is ammonium chloride. So NH4Cl, that's NH4 plus and Cl minus. This is the conjugate acid of a weak base, in this case ammonia, and so this is going to be acidic. Okay, so now if we were just kind of put everyone in their appropriate piles, um, this would be NH4Cl, would go into this box, into the neutral box, we would put sodium chloride would go in there, and potassium bromide, and into the basic box we would put KF and magnesium acetate and our potassium benzoate would also go in there. Okay? So all those would go in the basic in the basic box. So we can eyeball a salt and decide whether it's acidic or basic. But is there anything else we can do with this information? And the cool thing that we can do with this is create buffers. So the acidic basic nature of a salt can be exploited to create a buffer. And buffers are key in biochemistry because most biochemical systems only work within a narrow pH range. So keeping pH stable is key to keeping your biochemical systems working, including your own body. So most Proteins are very sensitive to pH. Um, you might know this if you've ever done anything where you've taken fish or egg or something like that and added some acid to it, lemon juice, vinegar, things like that. Often you see it begin to coagulate. The protein is denaturing just as if you were cooking it. Um, so pH is one way um, that you can you know, play with in terms of cooking, um, but it's also very critical for biochemical systems. So what is a buffer? How does it work? Um, so a buffer is essentially a sponge. So if I have something that's, we'll just call this generically, here's a buffer, and I can pour H plus into it, H3O plus, or I can dump in OH minus, and the pH of the buffer will remain pretty stable. It acts almost like a little tiny sponge. So one way of thinking about this is it's just a way to soak these things up without changing the pH. So that means that there's got to be something in there that it will react with, right? You can't just do that if there's no place to put them. So we need a spot to stash in our buffer OH minus and the H3O plus. And making a combination of a salt that's acidic or basic and its conjugate acid or base gives us two places for it to soak something up. So let's consider a mixture of HA and HA minus. Um, and we could do the same thing with B and BH plus, but let's stick to the acids first. Let's look at Le Chatelier. If I have HA plus H2O, and I have A minus plus H3O plus. I've got this nice equilibrium set up. If I dump in hydroxide, so if I add OH minus, what does that do? OH minus reacts with HA, and that's not even equilibrium. It just goes right in and pulls that proton right off of the HA to give you A minus 
plus water. So this reaction goes to completion. It's not an equilibrium. Okay. And so what that does is you add OH minus to that, it then automatically results in producing some A minus. But it does it without shifting the pH. So it's soaked up the OH minus and hasn't really affected in any large amount the amount of H3O plus that's in there. Ah, so there is a key equation that goes for this. Um, so one thing to think about when you do this is these things require large concentrations of A minus and HA because you want to be able to sop these things up in both directions. So let me reverse this. If I reverse this, if I add H3O plus to this, so add some H3O plus, if I add enough, what that's going to do is give me A minus plus H3O plus is going to give me HA plus H2O. And this again is going to go to completion. And in doing so, is going to result in producing some HA. Okay? And this is the key to a buffer. But if I only have a little HA and a little A minus, it's not going to have a very large capacity. So we think about the capacity of the buffer, and that has to do with the large concentrations that typically are used of A minus and HA. You can build a buffer out of any pair of a conjugate acid and its corresponding base, or out of an acid and its corresponding conjugate base. It's an incredibly flexible, flexible system. So the equation that goes with this, which I'm going to show and then I'm going to derive. So the equation that goes with this is called the Henderson-Hasselbach. Henderson Hasselbalch. And you'll notice that there's that L in there. This is like the Emily Balsh seminars. So don't forget your um, don't forget your L when you spell these things. Henderson Hasselbach. Nobody pronounces the L. You really don't hear it. The equation is the following: its pH is equal to pKa plus log to the base 10 of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. And again, these must be matching pairs. These must be a conjugate pair. An acid and its conjugate base, or a base and its conjugate acid. The word conjugate comes from the Latin for married, right? So these are couples um, or pairs. So you can't just use a random acid and a random random base. So where did this equation come from? So can we derive it? And we can. So let me once again write out this sort of general form of the equation. Plus H2O goes in equilibrium with A minus plus H3O plus. Let's say I start off, let's, here's my rice table again. Here's my initial concentration of the acid, acid sub zero. And here's my initial concentration of the base. Um, the reaction that I have going on in addition to this is HA plus OH minus, which is going to give me, in this case, A minus plus H2O. So that's going to result in the loss of some of that acid and the production of some of that base. So what I'll get here is I'll have acid not minus x, base not plus x, and then I'm going to have my concentration of H3O plus. And I'm going to consider that to be my variable in all of this. Well, I know what Ka is equal to. Ka is going to be the concentration of the base, not minus x. Concentration of H3O plus over 
acid knot minus x. So the first one is plus x, the other is minus x. Um, but I know that for large concentrations of base and acid that are much, much greater than the amount of OH minus added, which is essentially X, okay, that the concentration of base naught minus X is about equal to the concentration of base originally. And same for the acid. Acid naught plus X, I've reversed that, sorry. So base plus X and then the acid is minus X and that's the same as acid knot. So that means that really I can write this as being base knot, concentration of H3O plus, divided by acid knot. And now let me take minus log to the base 10 of both sides. So that gives me minus log to the base 10 of Ka, and that's gonna be equal then to minus log to the base 10 of base knot over acid knot minus log to the base 10 of H3O plus. But I recognize this. This is pKa. This I'm going to leave alone. Minus log to the base 10 of base over acid. And that's the pH, right? Minus log to the base 10. H3O plus plus the pH. So if I rearrange this, I find out that the pKa plus log to the base 10 of the base concentration over the acid concentration is equal to the pH. And this equation will be important for us both in doing titration curves and also in terms of preparing buffers to use in the lab. Okay, and you're going to do this in the lab. We'll do a little bit in lecture, but you'll do more of that in the lab. And preparing buffers, um, if you go on to take biochemistry or work for Dr. Chander or for Dr. White or Dr. Kung, um, oftentimes one of the first things you're going to need to do is use a buffer. And um, so you'll need to know this type of equation. Um, one thing interesting to notice about all of this is if you use a initial concentration of the base, the same as the acid, then the pH will be equal to the pKa. So that lets you quickly find a buffer in the right, in the right zone. Um, so often you'll see something like one molar sodium acetate, one molar acetic acid buffers. Okay, and that would have a pH of 4.75 equal to the pKa of acetic acid. So I want to stop here and pick up doing some buffer problems on Friday in lecture. Um, I hope you guys are having a, um, a lovely and delightful day. Um, I don't, let's see if I could put a picture in from where I did this, but I might find a way to drop that into the OneNote. Um, stay safe, um, enjoy playing in the snow when it all stops, and um, I'll see you on Friday.